Hello to everybody. So let me correct the written exam. I will base my correction on version A, but then I will tell something also for the other versions. So it was made of two exercises. The first exercise counts for nine points, the second for six points for a total grade available of 15 points. And then, <clears throat> here, first point, there is a function here to be studied. Consider the function f, which has some domain defined by this expression. So, first question, find the domain, dom of f, the limits of the extreme of dom of f, and the possible asymptotes. And so, first, so we start from exercise one. First point, here we have an analytic expression and this is well defined for all the real x except x equal to 2. So this is correct for x different from, from 2. The analytic expression that defines f is well defined. So when we say domain, without other specifications, we mean that the domain is the set, is the maximal, the largest possible set of x for which the analytic expression here is meaningful, okay? So the denominator must be different from zero. So we have that the dom of f is equal to r min points point two. Then the limits of the extremes the extremes are, I write it here, x equal to 2 from the left and from the right, plus infinity, and minus, minus infinity. Okay? And here we have that for the limit, for x equal to 2 from the right, we have that f of x is equal to what to 2x minus 2 here because for x equal to 2 the argument of the absolute value is positive so 2x minus 2 minus x squared so here we have minus x squared and here 2x plus 2x here so it is 4x and here we have minus 2, 4x minus 2, divided by 2 minus x, for x in a neighborhood of 2, in particular for x larger than 1. So this goes to what? This goes to, here just replace the value 2, so we have minus 4, plus 8, which is plus 4, minus 2 is equal to plus 2. So this is equal to 2 divided 2 minus x for x going to 2 plus and minus. And now we have to distinguish. This goes to when x goes to 2 from the right, x is larger than 2. So the denominator here is negative. A numerator here we have a positive number, here we have z zero from the right, so sorry from from the left, so this goes to minus infinity. Analogously, the denominator is positive when x is smaller than two, so here we have a plus infinity for x going to, to minus. Oh for all the other versions, it was exactly the same. The limit from the right towards the value, the only value excluded from the domain was minus infinity, and the limit for the, for the, from the left was plus infinity. Okay. So, and now for x going to plus infinity or to minus infinity, <clears throat> here we have f of x equal to... When you go to plus infinity or minus infinity at numerator, the only important term is the one with the highest degree, so it is minus x2. So here you have minus x2 plus 
little o of x2, and here we have minus x plus little o of x. So by the principle of uh, negligibility of uh, little o's, we just have to take into account this guy here. So here there are many minuses, so let me replace with a plus, x squared plus o of x squared. Here we are multiplying by minus 1, both the denominator and numerator. And this goes to what? For x going to plus infinity, the two of them are positive, but here we have a square, so this goes to plus infinity. When x goes to minus infinity, of course, the numerator is higher order than the denominator, but here we go to minus infinity for x going to minus infinity. So these are the limits of the domain. Possible mistakes here, so there were many possible mistakes, and uh, what is not a mistake, but it is a bad writing, which I did not count, is the following. If you write something here, f of x goes to, for instance, 2 divided, 0 plus for x going to 2 minus. This is not correct as a writing because this has no sense, okay? This is a writing only for limits or for left and right derivative if you want. But if you write an expression with numbers and here there is a plus, I know exactly what you mean. This is not ambiguous. And this leads to the correct answer, but it is not a correct writing. This is not a correct notation because this is not a number. When you have a limit, after the limit there must be a number or plus infinity or minus infinity or does not exist, but not this symbol. Okay? However, I did not count it, but you have not only to learn mathematical analysis, to learn reasoning, to learn computation, but also to learn a language. And there is a grammar, there is an orthography to be respected. Okay? And this is bad. Slightly horrible. Hmm? This is a bad ride. Now, let us go to the possible asymptotes. From here, from here, you immediately have that x equal to 2 is a vertical, if you want to say, to add bilateral, because it is for x uh, going to 2 plus or 2 minus. Sorry, it is from here, the asymptote, not from here. x equal to 2 is a vertical asymptote. Bilateral, if you want. Because it is both from the right and from the left. Then, here, the fact that the limit of f for x going to plus or minus infinity is plus or minus infinity tells us that there are no horizontal asymptotes, so there can be some uh, other asymptotes which are the uh, slant asymptotes. So, let us look for slant asymptotes. And now you can use the two limit or so on, but what I like more is to perform the ratio of the two polynomials in this case. So for x going to plus infinity, we have this expression with plus here. So f of x is equal to, as I already wrote, minus x squared plus 4x minus 2 divided by 2 minus x. Let me write it with uh, sign changes because uh, it is more natural, more used to that. At my age, it is not so easy to change the habits. So now we want to perform this division and you can do it by many methods. I like to write it directly and uh, it is not so difficult because here you have to remember x squared minus 2x because this divided by x minus 2 is correct but then here there is minus 4x so, so you have other 2x in order to complete here the minus 4x and uh, then since you have to divide by x minus 2 you add plus 4 and then since here there is plus 2 and not plus 4 here you have minus 2 
okay? Now, this is divided by x minus 2, so you take the first two terms, and this is equal to x. The second couple is minus 2, oh, sorry, x minus 2, and then there is minus 2 divided by x minus 2, but this is exactly x minus 2 plus Lidolo of 1, as x goes to plus infinity. So, this is the definition of asymptote. So, the line y is equal to x minus 2 is the right, because it is for x going to plus infinity, right, slant, asymptote. For, for, so, for x going to minus infinity, first, let us write the function for minus infinity. We have to get rid of this absolute value in the opposite way, because here it is uh, negative. So we have minus 2x here, that cancels plus 2x, and plus 2. So you have 2 minus x squared, divided 2 minus x. Again, let me write it with a change of sign, because I find it more comfortable to reason. And here, this time, perform the same uh, procedure as before. So x squared minus 2x, but there is no 2x, so plus 2x. And here, minus 4 plus 2 divided by x minus 2. And again, this is x plus 2, this time, plus 2 divided x minus 2. And this is x plus 2 plus little o 1 for x going to minus infinity. And so the line y is equal to x plus 2 is the left slant asymptote. So, um, these two asymptotes here were the same for all versions. So, if you did not find this, then there is something wrong. Okay? And now, let us go to the point 2. By the way, what should you... What was it possible to, to, to make wrong here? Uh, so, there were many, many possibilities to, to make mistakes. Uh, and, uh, but here, basically, there were mistakes of computation. So you have to be careful here. And what to write? What to write? in? Uh, so here, it, it was uh, very simple. So the domain, you just write the domain. And then uh, here, you can just write, sorry, just write this this passage, this, not, not write, not, don't write everything. And here, just some passages. Here, probably, you can write here. And then the conclusion. The conclusion here is extremely important. Okay? So, let us go to the second point, continuity and differentiability. And now, second point. F is the composition of continuous functions wherever they are defined. So, with the only exclusion of the zero here, the denominator, f is continuous in the domain. This is the end. The continuity can be only studied in the domain. Okay. Because it is composition of continuous functions. So don't go. It is not required. It is not required to study the discontinuity. Remember the linguistic difference between non-continuity and discontinuity. Continuity can be studied only in the domain. And the domain function is continuous by composition. What about the differentiability? The differentiability is also by composition, except in the only point where the numerator is not differentiable, which is x equal to 1. So, f is differentiable 
again by composition, and DOM F minus 1. That is because it, when I say because, I hear, you know, Matteo Renzi, he always says because. <laughs> so <laughs> I listen to his incredible speech in English, and so I'm tempted to say because, but it is not because. There is someone who speaks English worse than me. You have to cope with this. Okay, F is distinguishable in DOM F minus 1 because, because, um, it is composition of continuous functions. in R minus both 1 and 2, okay? Now we have to verify whether F is differentiable in 1. So, how can we do that? Let us compute whether they exist, f prime of 1 plus n minus. So, you know that f of x is equal to, we already wrote it, I write it again, it is x squared minus 4x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. And here, x squared minus 2 divided by x minus 2, according x larger than 1, x larger or equal, x less than 1. Of course, here we differentiate f prime of x. This is equal to... So, let me compute it. 2x minus 4. It was, was it minus 4? Yeah. 2x minus 4 times x minus 2, minus 1, which is minus x squared, plus 4x minus 2, divided by x minus 2 to the square, here, and here only 2x, x minus 2, minus x squared plus 2, divided by x minus 2 to the square, x less than 1, so this is equal to Uh, here, 2x squared minus x squared is equal to x squared. Here. Oh, sorry. Here, minus 4x. Minus 4x is 8. Minus 8 plus 4 is minus 4. And here is 8. Minus 2 is plus 6. x minus 2 to the square. This is for x larger than 1. And here, 2x squared minus x squared is again x squared. And here there is minus 4x again. And here, plus 2, divided by x minus 2 to the square for x less than 1. So here we already have the derivative, and this is equal to what? Uh, sorry, here I will add another page. This is equal to what when x is equal to 1? This is 1 minus 4, which is equal to minus 3, plus 6 which is equal to 3, and here there is 1. This is 3. <clears throat> for x large, for x equal to 1, sorry for, let me say, this is the left, sorry, the right derivative, 
And here we have uh, 1 minus 4, which is minus 3, plus 2, which is minus 1. And minus 1 is equal to f prime 1 minus. Since left and right derivative are different, are different so minus 1 is uh, a non-differentiability point. for f, and uh, in particular it is, since the two derivatives are finite from the left and from the right, it is a corner point, not a cusp. Cusp if you have some infinity here. So, Mm. So this is the point of, uh, so we can conclude, uh, it is very important to write clear the conclusion, the domain of differentiability is equal to R minus 1 and 2. Good. So let us let us tell me let us tell me something. First, what do you want you to write here? I want you to write the derivative, even though it is not clearly specified. In order to find this result and also to find the intervals of monoton of monotonicity, I want to see the derivative. Okay? Otherwise, I don't know how did you know that. Perhaps you plot the computer in, uh, plot the graph in, in, on your computer and then you deduced, you saw the intervals. And I don't like it. You have to show me that you computed the derivative. Okay? And, but just the result. I don't want to see possible mistakes, just computation mistakes when doing a derivative. The derivative is basically idiotic. But you have to, to do that. Hmm? And uh, so, what else? Uh, possible mistake, which is not a deep mistake, but I have to signal, is to include the point uh, two as point of non-differentiability. If you write two is a point of non-differentiability, this is a mistake because two is outside the domain. So the question of differentiability as well as the question of uh, continuity does not apply to it. Okay, this is a sort of a lawyer argument. It is not a deep mathematical argument. It is a, a definition. Sometimes I have to to to, to change my, 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 my work and to, to be a lawyer or a, or a sort of a grammar teacher and so on because mathematics has its grammar. So here just write me the derivative. Write me the derivative and the computation. And uh, so, what else? Other possible mistake that I saw? Oh, not, uh, not so much here. Some, somebody called it a cusp here, not a cusp. A corner is not, is not a cusp. Hmm? Okay. Then, uh, <clears throat> then we go to point three, the intervals of monotonicity and possible local maximum and minimum points. Okay, this is, this is, uh, an interesting point, let me copy the exp oh sorry, sorry, it is not here, the expression of the derivative. And here you have to to reason on the sign of the derivative. Some of you told me because it is a corollary of Lagrange theorem, yes it is correct, but it is a so common point that uh, you perhaps can, uh, you are allowed not to, to cite it. 
Okay, so the study of the sign of f prime. Now, for x larger than 1, we have that x squared minus 4x plus 6. This is x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 2, which is, this is, is x minus 2 to the square. So this is x minus 2 to the square plus 2. And this is always larger than 0. This is the end. So f is monotonically Sorry, let me more precise. It's strictly monotonically increasing where? Notice that here there is the asymptote. The asymptote is here. So you, you have to be careful. Not in 1 plus infinity, but in 1, 2. Open the interval here. Because in 1 it is a corner point. We will see it. Union 2 plus infinity. In 2 there is the vertical asymptote. Okay? Well, for x smaller than 1, of course here I'm studying the numerator only because the denominator is always non-negative. For x less than 1, we have to study here. So we have uh, these two solutions, x, 1, 2, which are equal to 2 plus minus 4 minus 2. So you have 2 plus minus square root of 3. And so the only possibility here is 2 minus square root of 3 because 2 plus square root of 3 is larger than 1. So it is not acceptable because this expression of the derivative only holds to the left-hand side of 1. Not acceptable. Acceptable. Yeah, should be right. This is x less than 1. Good. And uh, so we have the following, the following situation that f, so let, let me consider the sign the, of the derivative. So here we have minus infinity, then we have 2 minus square root of 3. Then uh, we have point 1, where the derivative change. Morally, 2 plus square root of 3 is here, but it does not count. And then uh, let me put it also 2, because 2 is outside the domain. And so here we have uh, the sign is increasing, because we are outside of the interval between the roots of the derivative here decreasing, and larger than 1, it is always increasing. Hmm? So if you want to use this sort of primitive symbology, you are allowed to do that. And here we have this situation here. Here you immediately see from the study of the derivative here, here there is an asymptote, so you will have the situation here. So we have that 2. So f is monotonically increasing strictly in minus infinity 2 minus square root of 3 union 1, 2, union 2 plus infinity and f monotonically decreasing in the interval between 2 minus square root of 3 and 1. And uh, now we can uh, also say that 2 minus square root of 3 is a local maximum point, and 1 is a local minimum point, okay? If you want also to say that the supremum of f is equal to plus infinity, and the infimum of f is equal to minus infinity, because there is a vertical asymptote and also at minus and plus infinity, 
they go to minus and plus infinity, so there are no global nor no so, sorry there are no global maxima nor minima. Hmm? And then we can go to the graph. Let me say whether there was a okay the point four. The graph now is uh, is made if you understood and interpreted correctly the previous points. The graph is here, and here you have two. And here you have one, and here you have two minus square root of three. So now you want to, maybe you want to understand what is the value at one in order to see whether it is uh, the two extremes are outside or not. Uh, sorry, are above or below the x-axis, f of 1 is positive, because here you have minus 1 plus 2. So f of 1 is equal to 2. And then you can be more or less precise here in, in drawing uh, the intersection with the axis. But this is not very important for me. What you, what you have uh, to remember is that for y is equal to x plus 2, you have an asymptote here at minus infinity. And for y is equal to x minus 2, you have the other asymptote at plus infinity. So perhaps it is here. Uh, yeah. And now, of course, uh, with me you can afford not being so precise, but however, you stay here. Then here there is a corner point, and then here the function goes to minus infinity when x goes to 2 from the left, from, oh sorry, from the right, and so on. So the, the green is, uh, is the graph, and you don't have to specify much more. Be careful of the coherence between what you wrote before and here. In many cases, there were mistakes for instance, in the asymptote, but then the graph was correct. What I can conclude? I can conclude that the graph has been copied or made by the use of the computer. Okay, so I was quite strict on this point. Last is 5. It is quite complicated here. Let me read it. Let G satisfy G is equal to F for every X in minus infinity 1. So we are in the second determination. Write the equation of the line tangent to the graph of the solution to the following Cauchy problem. Hmm? So let me write the Cauchy problem. Let me copy it. Or let me copy all the question. Tuck. Hmm? Okay. I want it to be a bit clearer, a bit larger here, but I did not manage. So, we want, sorry, the tangent to the solution to this Cauchy problem at this point, okay? Trust us, there is existence of uniqueness, so we can talk about the solution. And uh, in order to write the tangent, we have to know y of 0, and we already have y of 0, and y prime of 0. So y prime of 0 is g of 0, y of 0. But y of 0 is equal to 1, so this is equal to g of 0. What is g of 0? g of 0 is f of 0. What is the value of f of 0? f of 0 is simply... 2 
divided by 2. So f of 0 is equal to 1. So here we have the angular coefficient because y is a line. So we have y equal to x plus a number that guarantees that y of 0 is equal to 1. So this is x plus 1. And this is the end. So you don't have to solve the differential equation here. It is very, very easy. You just have to reason like that. Okay? So, and this is the end of the first part. This is the end of the first part. And then uh, I will uh, upload another video for the second part. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.